Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest on the Beginner's Mind series is Jeffrey Allen, who's a popular Mind Valley author. I'm sure you must have seen one of his videos on YouTube, and he's a globally famous sought after speaker, a powerful energy healer, and a pioneer in online energy trading. Energy training, I beg your pardon, not energy trading. <laughs> he's an engineer by trade and an energy healer at heart. Jeffrey Allen has helped. Countless people combine their intellect and their intuition to boost their confidence, improve their relationships, find meaning and purpose in life, and manifest the life of their dreams. And that will be the subject of our discussion today with Jeffrey. He has taught hundreds of thousands of people on how to harness the power of their own inner energy and awareness to improve their relationships, deepen their spiritual connection, and increase personal presence, happiness, and impact in the world. His mission is to make energy work and higher awareness available to everyone across the world, not just a select few. To all of you who, you, who you're uh, tuning in, he simplifies the the science, the dynamics behind it, so we can each unburden ourselves from needless conflict and pain and embrace happy, fulfilling lives of true passion, purpose, and meaning. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Jeffrey Allen. Ah, thanks. thanks so much. It's a pleasure yeah, to have you great. here. Yeah, it's great to, great to be here. Thank you so much. You, you radiate that sort of positive energy, uh, Jeffrey. You bring that. <laughs> calming, soothing presence uh, right from when we first spoke. Uh, and I'm sure this is going to be an interesting conversation. So thank you so much. Great. Yeah. Great. I'd like to begin with uh, um, with, your, with your background and how you got into energy healing. Because um, when a layperson hears the term energy, I think what comes to our mind is, <laughs> uh, you know, conventional energy, thermonuclear energy, and energy that powers the world. And if I'm not wrong, you're a double bachelor's mm -hmm. yourself in computer science mm -hmm. and mathematics, and you also worked for the Energy Corporation or Energy Department at some states. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. I worked for uh, the U.S. Department of Energy. Yeah. Oh, wow. Great. <laughs> so uh, what led you to the energy that powers our engines and our houses to thinking about and researching about the energy that powers our inner spiritual worlds? Yeah. Yeah, great question. Um, so for me, my background, like you mentioned, is really in mathematics and computer science. Mm -hmm. and I'm yeah, that's where I got my degrees, and that's where um, I spent the first 15 years of my career really focused on uh, this, you know, kind of analytical aspect of the world, and and it, it's really fun. I love that. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, uh, even when I was in college, I started having some experiences that I, I didn't know what to do with. You know, mm -hmm. I had this set of beliefs about how the world worked, and you know, a uh, very analytical person. Mm -hmm. uh, but I started I started having experiences like uh, seeing light around people mm -hmm. or um, other energy experiences that I thought, I don't really know what to do with this. It doesn't really fit in my, in my normal beliefs, but mm -hmm. it's an experience that I had. And so I want to explore it more. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I started really diving in just, you know, this was all pre-internet days, right? This is in the early 90s. So mm -hmm. I would, uh, you know, I was reading books about stuff and then eventually started going to some workshops and training mm -hmm. and, um, and found myself in uh, Boulder, Colorado uh, at a school they, for energy healing and intuitive work. Okay. The school's called the uh, Psychic Horizon Center in, in Boulder. And I thought... Uh, I'm just curious if any of this stuff is real. Um, I'm only going to know if I try it for myself. You know, mm -hmm. if I hear somebody else talking about it, or if you're listening to me and I tell you my stories, it's just mm -hmm. a guy telling, your, telling stories, right? right. <laughs> but when you actually do something for yourself and you have an experience, all of a sudden it becomes real. And it's like, wow, there must be mm -hmm. something happening here that mm -hmm. I don't completely understand. And uh, so that's, that's kind of what got me started was really these experiences. Oh, wow. No, um, and I'm, I'm curious about the seeing light around people and things like that. And I read it somewhere, and I believe it to um, I believe it fully, not to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. That it, mm -hmm. you know, hap happens with me often. I can you walk into a room and you can sense the energy. You walk yeah. into a room and people can sense your energy. You meet a stranger mm -hmm. and you can sense the energy. And mm -hmm. uh, frequently, you just be drawn to another person just on the energy vibrational thing. And you'll be like, I probably know you or I want to get to know you one way or yeah. the other. And But you're drawn. And um, there, there's a connection that you cannot explain, which might not have happened in the real world before, mm -hmm. but is about to happen or maybe at a different wavelength that there's that interconnection. Mm -hmm. um, speak to us about th this, please. So when, when we talk about 
the energy field around people. Mm-hmm. Um, how does that work? How are we drawn to other people? Mm-hmm. What are the dynamics here? And how can we use this information to attract better people or, mm-hmm. you know, just n- n- um, not from a, just a, a selfish point of view to further my interests, but to, um, you know, lead the life that I'm here to lead? Yeah, you bet. That's a great question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, definitely we're all um, feeling energy and sensing energy all the time, but mm-hmm. we don't usually put it in those words, especially if we don't have a kind of a background in that kind of training or if, we're, or if our culture doesn't really have that in the main belief system. You right. know? Yeah. Then sometimes we just we're, we're operating on this level of connecting, but we don't really understand it. Mm-hmm. But uh, just like you mentioned, uh, basically, uh, you will feel it. Like you'll feel drawn to somebody. Mm-hmm. You'll feel repelled from somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, you'll feel like, I don't know why, but I need to uh, go to this particular place or I need mm-hmm. to join this particular uh, group. Mm-hmm. And uh, that if you, if you listen and you're open to it, and you follow that kind of guidance, you'll start to discover uh, which you know which parts are real and are kind of synchronicity. They're opening for you, and then which parts are you know kind of creative or wishful thinking, <laughs> right? Right. And that's that's the biggest uh, challenge as people are moving into their intuition mm-hmm. is noticing the difference between these. When am I actually getting guidance mm-hmm. uh, that I can follow, and when am I just getting some good ideas and, and kind of trying to, you know, write an interesting future for myself. Mm-hmm. And uh, oftentimes, you know, for me, oftentimes the difference is if I'm surprised. So oh. if, if I'm getting some intuition and it completely makes sense and validates everything I want, mm-hmm. there's a good chance I'm, you know, I'm making that up, right? <laughs> <laughs> if I get guidance and I'm like, what? I can't believe it. What is that about? Or I don't know about that. If you're feeling that, that is a good sign that uh, that's your intuition. Right. If, uh, if, you, if you didn't understand it, it didn't come from your mind, mm-hmm. right? It came from mm-hmm. And um, what I'd recommend for people is uh, just to start having fun with this, uh, be curious and play with it. So, you know, in my early days when I was just starting with intuition, I would do simple things like, I'm driving to work. So, you know, of the three roads I could take, which one do I feel like is going to be good today? Mm-hmm. And I would take that road. And then the next day I'd take, you know, whatever was best that day. And after doing this for a little while, I thought, sure, it seems like it's working, but how do I know? Right? Mm-hmm. It could mm-hmm. be quick. So then I did the opposite. I said, okay, I'm, I'm still going to look, but then I'm going to turn the other way. Mm-hmm. The way that I'm getting is not the easy way. And that's when I really got validated on my intuition because that was – uh, you know, roads were closed. There were traffic accidents. Every time I went against my guidance intentionally, I realized, oh, this is a more difficult path. Mm-hmm. So it, it's okay to do both. You know, the, mm. the goal isn't to be right. The goal is to explore and to start to gain confidence and know, you know, when are you receiving some guidance for you? And when are you, uh, you know, just hoping things will be the way you want? <laughs> right. Or when it is the inner critic trying to pull you back, you know, um, trying yes. to scare you out of doing something important um, as mm-hmm. well. I think um, I think one needs time to establish that connect and would, would put that question across to you. Are there are there daily practices? Are there rituals? I mean, at mm-hmm. the moment, as we are recording this conversation here today, it's like uh, early. Well, not really early morning, but I, I came in the office early morning today, 7 a.m., you know, for mm-hmm. it's my usual starts around nine. Uh, but is there something that people across the world can do in the beginning of their day to have a more clearer connection with mm-hmm. them, with their inner guidance system? Um, do you, sure. Yeah, uh, I would say um, uh, the thing that helps the most is being really present in your body and being happy with your self in your body. And so mm-hmm. um, what I recommend, you know, if you're listening to this right now, what mm-hmm. I'd recommend is uh, just notice where you're sitting right now. Just mm-hmm. feel yourself in your chair and feel your energy extending from your physical body right down into the earth. So you might feel this as a, a beam of light going to the center of the earth. It could be a waterfall, a tree trunk, whatever feels really nice and comfortable for you. And as you do that, what you'll notice is you'll start to be drawn more and more into your body. So you might feel a little heavier, a little slower. You might feel bright or powerful. 
And this, this is the center of where you're going to get your intuition. It sounds a little funny because a lot of people think your intuition is out there somewhere else, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to go outside mm -hmm. your body, find some information. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really work like that. Mm -hmm. So if you're present in your body, that's when you're going to get the most uh, clear intuition. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, would, I would ground in the morning mm -hmm. and then uh, notice any place where you're feeling a little bit of um, judgment, either for mm -hmm. your body or for yourself, like, oh, I, you know, I didn't do this thing yet that I wanted to do yesterday or today, uh, you know, my nose is too big or too small or you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever your thing is. I don't have right. enough money or I, you know, whatever it feels like uh, is lacking for you. Just mm. say hello to that mm. energetically and say, OK, I have this feeling. Oh, it looks looks like I, I feel like uh, I'm lacking in this way. I feel like I'm missing something. Mm -hmm. oh, OK, that's great. Mm. And don't do anything about it. Just acknowledge it. Right. And when you do that, um, that will uh, basically it'll turn it down so that's mm -hmm. not, not pulling on you all day trying to get your attention. Mm. Just kind of acknowledge it. Oh, yeah, I feel this way. OK, great. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm. And uh, and from there, uh, I would say just be curious. You know, everybody's using their intuition all the time. Right. Um, the the big confusion that I see, uh, well, actually, there's two parts that I see with people. One is most of us when we get our intuition, especially early on, we think it's a question, mm -hmm. right? So I might, uh, for example, um, it's you know I might be heading to work in the morning, and I look over and I think, I wonder if I should bring an umbrella today. Mm. And then I think, nah, I don't think I need it. You know, I checked right. the app, it said no rain. Mm -hmm. uh, then later in the day, you think, oh, I, I wish I'd have brought that umbrella because it's raining. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it wasn't a question, should you do it? It was actually a suggestion. Right. And so uh, if you catch yourself, a lot of times when you start wondering, should I do this? Should I do that? If it's something that came to you out of the blue, Mm -hmm. uh, just consider, oh, maybe this is an answer, not a question. Right, <laughs> right. right. And then, and then uh, just try it. You know, it's uh, and I would try it on small stuff. Don't start with um, mm -hmm. uh, the biggest, most difficult challenge you've ever had in your entire life. Mm -hmm. That's not the easiest place to start with intuition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> start with places where it's okay to fail, where it's okay to experiment. Right. Have fun and, yeah. No, that, that's a great suggestion there to start small and experiment with it until you find your own way forward and figure out what works for you and what degree it works for you. What are the internal tools and practices? What, what sort of support mechanism you need to set up in order for those things to work for you? Um, and uh, I was going to ask you this, this next question about the intersection of law of attraction with intuition and uh, our inner energy. Are we participating in this? process of guided intuition, you know, when we say, oh, I, I feel I received this from my higher self, that this is what my purpose is, or this is what direction mm -hmm. I should be moving into. Am I a co-creator in that process? You know, once I have that awareness, what's going on in my mind on a daily basis? Is it really paving that way forward for me? Or was that, is that something that's done already? And I just have to move into that direction to watch what degree do you feel are we active mm -hmm participants and if yeah. we are um, how mindful should we be of that and how do we mm -hmm. you know use that positively yeah yeah that's a great question so mm -hmm. um, yes we're definitely uh, actively participating in uh, what we're creating in our lives um, but we're not actively participating in a conscious way all the time right mm -hmm. so uh, I liked what you said, where uh, it feels like this is coming from my higher self, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and really, different people use different words, but it's all the same. Mm -hmm. You know, you can call it spirit guides, or uh, you may be connecting with your God, or mm -hmm. you know, whatever whatever way for you is is just great. You know, it's all the same. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all the same energetically, and um, so um, as a spirit, you're definitely creating opportunities for yourself in the body. Okay, mm -hmm. so you're. Uh, even before you were born, you looked at this life and said, ah, there's some opportunities that I'd like to create ah, this this day and these parents and this would be a great time to be born. And I can see that all those opportunities would arise and right. this would give me the chance to do the things I want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a plan in that sense. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, um, even if you're not trying really hard, you'll sort of go along with that plan. Mm. But... Once you're here in a body, you know, we live in a free will 
zone here. So um, you're free to make choices to go anywhere right. you want. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's it can actually be a little stressful if people think I have a life purpose and I need to figure out what it is and it's super important, but I don't know what it is or how to find it like mm. that. Uh, that can lead to some stress for people. So what I recommend instead is just realizing that, OK, I'm I'm right in the middle of my life. This is the perfect mm -hmm. place. Even if I veered off a little bit, it's no problem. I'll, I can naturally mm -hmm. come back to whatever mm -hmm. uh, my center is. And uh, just listen and be aware of uh, where you're being drawn to go energetically. Mm -hmm. So this might be an inspiration for a business, a relationship. Uh, it could be something really simple, uh, like I need to go uh, to this restaurant today. I don't know why. I've done that so mm -hmm. many times, and I, mm -hmm. I meet somebody, and it turns mm -hmm. out to be an important connection. Right. And just to just be aware of that. Uh, that draw that's inside you. Mm -hmm. And then I would say um, also be a little patient. So when we're creating things energetically, it's all happening really fast in mm -hmm. the energy. Things mm -hmm. are just boom, boom, boom. Yep. It takes a little time for that to play out uh, in our life. Mm -hmm. And so I see this a lot where uh, students will get uh, a big download, like, wow, I'm supposed to do this big project. And they get excited about it and they start uh, working on it, mm -hmm. but what they forgot to ask was, what's the time frame, mm -hmm. right? They mm -hmm. forgot to tune in and see, oh, this is something that'll be really important for me in two years or five years, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> so if, if you show up to the restaurant a year before dinner is served, you know, you're, you're going to be wondering, like, what's going on? It's Waiting just, a long like, time, yeah. I wrote this book and nobody bought it, you know, or, right. or whatever your thing is. And it's uh, you didn't fail, you just showed up a little early. Right? Uh -huh. So you want to yeah. look at... Uh, what's the time frame and uh, and let yourself uh, en just enjoy the life you're having now mm -hmm. knowing that those things are coming and just kind of you know steer yourself toward them uh, in a mm -hmm. gentle way then uh, you know go 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 I have to get there <laughs> yeah, I love that because oftentimes we think oh I'm now gonna take control of my life and misinterpret the the taking control of your life as in you were the driving seat no, you you you're like like a co-pilot you know co-captain there with a the lot going on I'm reminded of um, two beautiful quotes by the Sufi master Rumi who said um, and it, it corresponds it connects with what you just said about you know love, uh, figuring out what your heart wants to do he said whatever you do wherever you are always be in love whatever you do and wherever you are always be in love and I think probably that's uh, you know that I and mean, we'll talk about this I'm, I'm, that's going to be my next question to you about this energy of love for you know for existence for mm -hmm. those around you how does that create good things in, into your life and and second he said um, something on these lines your heart already knows the way um, you just have to follow in that direction your heart already each each mind has been planted with the seed and you know you have, have to allow that seed to blossom but let's talk about love first you know um, yeah. The, the planet needs healing. You know, we have a war, war raging on in, in, in the world mm -hmm. right now. There, there's a lot of conflict. Social media has fueled. Well, it, there's both sides to it. It's connected mm -hmm. people across different continents. You and I having this conversation. It's also yeah. divided people. You know, the algorithms keep um, putting all that stuff, mm -hmm. whatever's working. And the human mind is usually not working for what's best for it. It's usually indulging our collective consciousnesses as <laughs> my interpretation is usually indulging in a lot of self-harm, you know, rather yeah. than we would be watching all of your videos or other, you know, <laughs> stuff that helps us go to higher levels of consciousness. But no, we, we watch to we, we watch the stuff that divides us and creates more hatred in the world. So we need more healing. So talk to us about the energy of love, please, uh, Jeffrey. And also would love to hear about the story about if, if you're okay with it, uh, the, you moving to Japan and, and meeting your wife. And, yeah. you know, yeah, would love to hear that as well, please. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. You bet. So mm -hmm. those, are, uh, those are tied together, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so it's great. So everything you were saying there is, uh, is so relevant right now. So uh, I'll share a little bit from the training that I'm working on with my wife right now. So, uh, sure. so he saw me, my wife, he saw me, I'll tell the story first. Mm -hmm. um, I met her, I'd been traveling around teaching uh, around the globe for a little while. And I got invited uh, to speak in Japan to teach mm -hmm. uh, you know, a month worth of workshops here. Interesting. And, uh, and, I, and I came in and before I, uh, before I left, the day, I was, the day before I was leaving, 
uh, a friend was hitchhiking on the road and I stopped mm-hmm. picked him up. I said, oh, I'm going to Japan tomorrow. And mm-hmm. he handed me a business card. He said, oh, I'm actually meeting with two friends from Japan for lunch. And, uh, you know, I think one of them would really like to meet you. But I didn't have time. I was going somewhere else then. I took this business card. And then the entire time I was in Japan for a month, I kept putting it on top because, you know, everybody here gives you a card when you meet them. So I had a mm-hmm. stack of cards. <laughs> mm-hmm. I kept moving this to the top, moving it to the top. Everything was over. Um, I called up the number. Uh it was uh, a f- actually a friend of my wife's. And I said, oh, I think we're, um, I don't know why, but I think we're supposed to get together and have lunch. And she said, oh, that sounds great. I'll bring my friend Hisami. Mm-hmm. And when she said the word, just when she said my wife's name, I could see her energy just like, whoo, just like, mm-hmm. right, so beautiful. I couldn't believe it. And I was like, yeah, bring her. <laughs> <laughs> right? And just my heart was so full. And right. I was standing outside the restaurant um, mm-hmm. before they even showed up. Mm-hmm. And I know that we're going to have a relationship. Wow. Like I can, can feel, you know, the opportunity that's out in front of us and where things are wow. going. And Just by hearing her even, name. Just by hearing yeah, her I'd name. Yeah, I'd never seen a photo of her. I didn't wow. know her. I hadn't met her. And, I, you know, of course, you know, my this part of my brain over here was saying, well, you know, I hope she's cute. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And, uh, but my heart was already in before I even met her. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then I, I met her and... Uh, I just felt the same thing. It's like, I, you know, I can't believe there's even a person this wonderful and, and mm. beautiful, you know, and uh, in every way. And and we kind of, um, you know, moved on from there. Our, our first date was really fascinating because, the you know, first date after that, because, you know, Hisami doesn't speak English mm. and I don't speak Japanese. Oh, wow. So our first date, you know, all we can say is, you know, you know, Hi, I'm Hisami. Nice to meet you. And I said, mm-hmm. uh, Konnichiwa, Jeffrey Allen does. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, we're all out of words. Body language, um, right. Okay. Yeah, but it, it turns out that if if you really want to know somebody, like in mm-hmm. your heart, you're drawn to somebody and you want to connect with them, you want to know them, mm-hmm. and, you, and you spend time with them without words, the connection that you find with each other will be so powerful. And mm-hmm. uh, it's just amazing. You know, best first date ever. Wow, and, uh, that's a great story. You know, I went, I went back to the U.S. and um, and I just had this feeling, you know, that we're gonna, you know, I finally met my my wife, right? Mm-hmm. But my logical mind was saying, but she lives in Japan <laughs> and she speaks <laughs> Japanese, <laughs> and yeah, like, right. And but 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 you know, here's all the reasons why it can't happen. Mm-hmm. But I. Uh, I just I I heard those and even though it was scary I just I I can't not follow my heart. I can't ask for all this this beautiful thing to happen mm-hmm. and when it shows up yeah. say oh I'm too afraid sorry right? Mm-hmm. I mean we do that a lot in our lives. Mm-hmm. Um it's kind of like what you're asking about um you know, how to how to flow how to manifest things. Mm-hmm. You have to get yourself out of the way and then you have to say yes when it shows up. Right. And uh, actually before uh, before I had that situation, maybe six months before, I had been trying to meet somebody. I'd been mm-hmm. kind of going to the places I thought they might be, and mm-hmm. you know, I was doing everything I could to you know, like manifest this relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, following all those things. And what actually worked was at some point I said, uh, "Hey guides, uh, I give up. Mm-hmm. Like if <laughs> uh, help, if if I knew how to create the relationship of my dreams." I would have done it already. Right. Obviously, I don't know what I'm doing. This is new territory. So mm-hmm. just help, help me out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was when things started moving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. That's when the synchronicity. Interesting. Synchronous season yeah. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and so you were asking uh, your question, bringing it back to love. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so with these summit, you know, we got married about eight months later. We've been married for 13 years now. Wow. Uh, almost. Congratulations. And, uh, Great. It's it's fantastic. We still aren't flowing in the same language, you know. So that's still a uh, somewhere to uh, look forward to in the future. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, but we both speak energy and we both feel energy. Wow! And so it works. And oh. we're actually been working for the last few years on a project together mm-hmm. that really answers your question and it really helped clarify this whole idea of love for me. Mm-hmm. And uh, so if I get if I can talk a little bit about this. Uh, this insights that come from my wife, Hisami, Please. she says that that um, we all have this sense of wanting to feel full inside. And that's mm-hmm. just natural. 
and we all have ideas of what what will fill us up, you know, um, and that's different for everybody. It might be, oh, I want a relationship, or I want a job, or I want to make more money, or I want to look better, or you know, whatever we feel will bring us that fulfillment. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the way he summarizes says is, we have two minds. We have one mind that's used to dealing with the external world, and mm-hmm. this mind is always looking outside. It always comes from lack. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, even if we have moments of fullness, we still feel like I need more or there's mm-hmm. something else. Mm-hmm. Um, but this was the big insight for me that she taught me was uh, we have another mind. We have a mind that we call spirit mind that always comes from a sense of fullness. Wow. And this mind is that same mind that we tap in for intuition. It's the mm-hmm. one that um, with the beautiful quotes you were just saying, mm-hmm. you know, those, those are coming from that same mind. Mm-hmm. Um, we all have this connection with the infinite and with the divine. It hasn't gone anywhere in us. Um, we just, most of us are trying to access it through this space of lack. Mm-hmm. We're trying to find fullness from a space of lack. It's right. a very hard thing to do. That's a long, challenging road. Mm-hmm. But we can just uh, start to turn this mind on and say, oh, I, why not find fullness from this space or from the mind Mm-hmm. which is, was already full to begin with. Right. You know, it's kind of like embracing your infinite part of you rather than mm-hmm. the finite part. Uh, yep. And it's important that we have both. Um, but if you just focus here, just focus on the finite, um, it's going to feel very challenging. Even mm-hmm. when you get the things you want, you're going to be sure. looking for more and more and more. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. The trying to operate from a shortage mindset is like filling up a bucket with several holes in it. And the moment you put yeah. something in, is it's empty again. Um, two things I want, really important in what you said, you know, stood out. And I want to just um, um, share it again for the benefit of everyone tuning in. One is when, when you said we both, we don't speak the same language, but we both speak energy. And I think that's one of my most powerful takeaways in this conversation thus far. And listen, all you guys are tuning in. You might be in mm-hmm. conflict with a coworker, a neighbor, or severe, you know, whatever human relationships we tend to be in. And you may speak the same language, but you're probably having an argument in, with the, in the energy world or with a stranger halfway across the world who comes from a different culture, different mindset, different set of values, different religion, everything, different race. And yet you may be soulmates because even though you don't speak the same language, you speak energy. So great, powerful takeaway for anyone who's struggling with a conflict right now is to go beyond the words, go beyond the oral, verbal, written Mm -hmm. communication that we are so, we've been fine-tuned to believe that that's the only medium to talk to another human being, but there's a deeper, richer well, medium. And uh, yeah. mm-hmm. you mentioned too, the the big challenges we're seeing in the world. You know, there's a war in yep. Europe right now. And, mm-hmm. um, so you know, even there, we have a choice of how do we view this? Mm. If I look at it from my sort of analytical mind or my, you know, my mind that sits in lack, what I see is the devastation, the loss, um, it just looks like, to, from this perspective, it looks like, oh, there's bad people doing bad things. Mm-hmm. But if I look at the energy, if I look from mm-hmm. a perspective of love and from fullness, mm-hmm. it looks very different. Yep. Right? So from that perspective, um, even if I look at uh, even if I look at Putin and, you know, and mm-hmm. say, okay, right now, energetically, uh, nearly everybody is saying, uh, we don't like you. We want you to go mm. away. You're mm-hmm. doing the wrong thing. People are sending mm. a lot of frustration, a lot of anger, a lot of pain and fear right. uh, to one person. So you can imagine anybody receiving all that energy mm-hmm. is not going to be in the best space to make a mm. choice out of love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? so it's like it's like we're you know if we really wanted to help mm. in that situation, mm-hmm. I want to say, okay, can I somehow just see people as people? Mm. Even in this in this extreme situation that I have a lot mm. of uh, seemingly really clear judgment and assessment mm. on, mm-hmm. I look and say, "Okay, uh, I'm going to try to send some light to this person. I'm going to mm. try to send some light to this person. Yeah. I'm going to recognize that uh, there's only one reason why we're why we circulate pain and confusion in the world, mm-hmm. and that's because we have pain and confusion inside. Inside, right? Agree. Yeah. So. If I have pain and confusion inside, I can't help but circulate that outside. Mm-hmm. So the, the trick is, especially when we see somebody that's uh, on, a, on a very large scale circulating pain and confusion and, and, uh, and conflict, 
Mm -hmm. is not to match that ourselves, right? right so to look inside right. and say, where am I like that mm -hmm. right now? Where, where do I have a little war raging inside? Where do mm -hmm. I have the seeds of this in me? Right. And then say, okay, can I have compassion for myself mm -hmm. that I have that pain inside? Mm -hmm. uh, can I have compassion for that other person because they have pain inside? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really this, this spirit mind, this mind that's from fullness and from love that sees everything from that perspective. It's not sure. judging things as good or bad. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes it's hard to find that because, you know, if we look from this perspective over here, sure looks like, uh, you know, a lot of pain and a lot of, a lot of bad stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's important to kind of just uh, try those both out. Let yourself experiment with these two perspectives. You don't have to get rid of one and keep the other. Just right. let yourself begin to have both. And let it be okay that you have two different minds telling you two different things. That's okay. That's actually normal. Right. It is indeed. So for all of you who've been wondering, am I the only abnormal one here? <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Jeffries has cleared that out for us. It's pretty normal. And to have that internal dialogue and then have that internal reconciliation as well. I think as far as, you know, these global situations which worry us, um, I think uh, the message is loud and clear. You can sitting wherever you are, in, even in front of your screens and your keyboards, you, you can... Mm -hmm. Uh, contribute positively to that situation and not aggravate it further by sending out that energy of, um, you know, greater conflict and revenge and more, more that you can send healing and love and understanding. I hope whatever it is inside you, man, that's that's leading you to this to cause destruction on this scale, that you get over it fast, that you heal that wound quickly so that you can realize how pointless, how useless this war has been and all of the wars that humanity has been. And, you know, um, I read somewhere, Jeffrey, about how astronauts experience this um, overview effect when they go in mm -hmm. space. They have this uh, uh, sort of a spiritual moment where, where they yeah. sometimes they even cry. They come back, even if they were perfectly scientific, logical minds before, mm -hmm. they come back now as deeper, richer spiritual beings. And, you know, looking at Earth from the space, understanding the, the sheer ignorance of you know, mankind killing itself, humankind killing itself and wars and yeah. things like that. When there are no borders, you can't see any divisions. All you see is the pale blue dot, as Carl Sagan said it once. That's, that's yeah. beautiful what you just said. I'm going to come back to circle back to another very important thing, um, mm -hmm. which is how we we need to redefine quitting in the sense. Well, what, what you just said about, you know, you were looking to find the right partner in your life. And then there came a point when you said, OK, you know, I've, from my ego perspective or from my I will find the right person perspective, yeah. I've tried, it hasn't worked, and I'm not just going to take a break now. And and then it beautifully, mysteriously, spiritually flowed to you, even <laughs> if the right person was halfway across the world. And, you know, how, that is giving me goosebumps because for so many people, you might be putting in the same sort of energy in your career or in your business on something else that you're trying to achieve so desperately and it's not working out. And perhaps if you take a step back and if you surrender to some higher guidance, uh, mm -hmm. it, it won't, it, it sh it, that's not quitting. That is not quitting. That's like I've, I've exhausted all my resources and I'm going to let, let some higher intelligence come in now and become my partner and we'll see what we co-create there. The problem is, um, it, we've been trained to look at that as quitting. Um, and yeah. that is probably the reason why a lot of people don't enter the space of surrender. Your thoughts on that, Jeffrey? Yeah, it's so true. Um, <clears throat> it's hard sometimes to let go of this idea that if I worked harder, mm -hmm. I would get my goals faster. And it's, in my experience, it's not actually true. Mm -hmm. You know, when I... Uh, if I want to get to a particular place, uh, have a particular experience, uh, the fastest way to get there is to uh, just, actually you can do it right now, is just kind of visualize, you know, what mm -hmm. is it that I want to have? What are the feelings that I want? Like in this case, it was, I just want a relationship that I I love so much that I just want to continue. I, you know, I just want to have no questions about my future. I just mm. love that relationship. <laughs> you know, mm. For many people, it's uh, there have been times when it was career for me. Like, I just want to do something that I love, that mm. I'm having fun at, that I'm helping people. You know, is mm. that so much to ask? <laughs> right? mm. So um, come up with whatever is clear for you. Mm -hmm. And then what you want to do is just 
uh, send some love, like a little light around that idea, that energy, that future. Uh -huh. And then what I do is I just kind of imagine I'm just sort of sending that, that little ball of energy out into my future, to my future mm -hmm. self. Here's okay. the dream. Here's the dream that I'm, I'm creating now, and I'm just going to pass it to my future self. And just knowing that when the time is right, that energy is going to come in, mm -hmm. and I will notice, and I'll just have to catch it at the right time. Mm -hmm. And for me, this is the this is the easiest way for me to create the not just the world of my dreams, but it's the easiest way to create a life beyond my dreams. Mm -hmm. right? Something bigger, bigger than I can imagine, bigger than I can dream. Uh, because when I send that energy out to my future, um, then I can focus on just enjoying myself right now. I don't mm -hmm. have to go, go, go. I don't have to try. I just have to be ready for that information, for the energy to come in. Mm -hmm. And then when it does, then yes, of course, there's going to be steps in the physical world, right? Like I had to get on a plane and go to Japan and, you know, I had to follow mm -hmm. through in the physical world. Mm -hmm. You can't just mm -hmm. have an idea, send some energy and it's like magic, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, mm -hmm. it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. um, you do have to follow up in the physical world. But the distance time-wise between the inspiration that you have and the fulfillment of that inspiration mm -hmm. is often a lot longer than you want. You know, oftentimes mm -hmm. we get inspiration and we want it to happen right now. Mm -hmm. I see the beautiful future. I'm not there yet, so I feel like I'm missing out. Uh, that's not why you got that vision. You were getting a mm -hmm. vision of where you're going to, and you were mm -hmm. being asked, yes or no, do you want this? this beautiful future or do you want a different beautiful future, right? Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, you're just saying, yes, I want this one. Sending that light out to yourself and uh, and then just be patient, you know, and just mm -hmm. trust that um, you don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to know all the steps to get where you're going. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a beautiful love that's guiding everything and it's guiding you right into the, the life that you want. Even if you don't really understand what life you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Still taking you there. You don't have to have those answers. Yeah, you're still sending on positive energy, and that's a great, great exercise. And for those of you who are with us in this conversation thus far, there's plenty of uh, meditations, guided meditations, and other videos mm -hmm. of uh, Jeffrey's available on YouTube. We'll share some of the links in the description. Go watch them, as well as his courses on Mind Valley will help you, and other platforms will help you deepen your understanding of this uh, energy world. I love the idea of sending positive energy to yourself because a lot of people are not doing that. We we don't send us ourselves yeah. love we don't prioritize that you know that's the we take it for granted is the other people i think it was ella wheeler wilcox the um, south african poet who wrote uh, we smile and we are at our best for the fleeting guest but we hurt the most those who love us the best um yeah. And that, that, that includes people in our immediate vicinity at times while we put on a facade of, you know, a smile and everything yeah. else for people that we hardly know. But deep down, I think it's um, ourselves that we take more for, for, uh, take for granted. So my question was going, going to be this, mm -hmm. Jeffrey. We've talked about the positive side of the energy mm -hmm. work. Uh, how might people or your clients or other people that you mm -hmm. come in contact with, how do we mess up our own lives by not knowing how to harness this positively and what are the common um, self-sabotage patterns you've seen when it comes to energy, inner energy, and what your recommendations might be so that people can redirect into creating a beautiful life? Sure, yeah. I think um, I mentioned a few of them already. The, uh, mm -hmm. One of the big challenges I see with people is when they're uh, working on their intuition is they um, they think it's a question rather than an answer. Mm. People tend to follow the guidance which makes sense, mm. which is a little bit, uh, you know, like being on the internet. You know, you, mm -hmm. you search and you get the results that you liked before, you mm -hmm. know, coming back. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. not a great recipe for, for growth. So, um, so you want to follow the guidance that comes in that you like. And then you also want to, you know, look at the other guidance that comes in and, you know, try it out too, right? Mm -hmm. Just be curious and have fun and explore. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you think that, you know, you have to be in control every step along the way. Mm. Uh, the At best, you could create the life of your dreams, you know, at best. Right. Um, but if you can let go of being in control, mm. you can create a life like, beyond your highest dreams. You can love create that. a life bigger than you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And I know that because I've done it. Like I mm -hmm. could never have imagined 
the life that I have now. Mm. And when I was trying to imagine uh, what would I be the happiest with, mm. it wasn't this. I had no idea until I got here. Mm-hmm. Of course, now I can say, oh, wow, I, I like this. I had no idea. You know, I, had, <laughs> I had no idea this is what I would love. Mm. And um, so, uh, you know, the trick is really kind of just getting out of your own way. Yeah. And, um, and not uh, not letting the fears stop you because mm-hmm. it's natural it's natural to have fear you know sure. if, uh, even in the, you know the big situations the big choices there's fear but even in the the small situations you know we oftentimes will have anxiety about mm-hmm. i've got this interview i've got this uh, date or uh, you know i've got to get on stage or you know there's people you know this brings anxiety to people mm-hmm. and uh, in those situations just always remind yourself oh that's that technique that Jeffrey Allen said. I could send myself, a, my future self, a little love. Right mm. now, in this moment, what if I just create a little ball of light, a little you know ball of love, and I just send it out mm-hmm. to my future self mm-hmm. on that date, in that interview, on stage, wow. right? And then the next day, if you're nervous again, like I'm just going to send some love to my future self, mm-hmm. just sending some love and support. I'm there. I'm mm. there helping you out. All right, go, buddy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then if you do that. What you'll notice when you show up in that situation, um, those fears that you had, um, you won't even notice them. You'll be catching mm-hmm. all this energy mm-hmm. that you sent yourself. Mm-hmm. You'll be like, you know, brighter and shinier than you even imagined you could be. Sure. And looking back, you might remember, oh, that's right. I was sending light to myself. No wonder mm-hmm. I wasn't nervous this time. No wonder it went so well. Mm-hmm. But in the moment, it's just gonna, it's just gonna feel like magic. But what it is is it's you riding that wave of love that you sent yourself. Wow! You know your future self, mm-hmm. and uh, we forget for some reason that um, we can, you know, once you're outside the body or operating at an energy level, you know, time and space are not uh, distant, right? right? It's it's you can send stuff to yourself in the future, future place. You know, this is no harder than imagining, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, because it's all in the now. It's all in the now. It's it's, right. it's all happening yeah. in the now, as Dr. Wayne Dyer used to say it. I love the idea, you know, and we do this, the sending love and best wishes. We do it for our loved ones. We do it for <laughs> our co-workers. We have best of luck to you for what's coming up tomorrow, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> uh, we really do it for ourselves. For ourselves, we have these neatly packaged doubts and, you know, self-doubt, self-sabotage, the inner critic all lined up, and we listen to them. And I think Jeffrey's <laughs> message is clear. Don't listen to the inner critic, to the self-sabotage to the negative comments and uh, and just send yourself love in the moment, in the future, and always. And I, I think the, the second biggest takeaway, Jeffrey, from what has emerged from what you just said is um, about getting out of your own way, um, which is surrendering to the spiritual energy, to your inner energy. And if I may quote um, the Sufi master Rumi here again, who said, when I run after what I think I want, my days are a furnace of stress and anxiety. When I run after what I think I want, my days are a furnace of stress and anxiety. And when I sit in my own place of understanding, what I need flows to me and without pain. And th- that to me changed my life when I first came across and mm-hmm. understood the real significance. Well, Rumi had decoded this, um, the whole law of attraction thing several centuries ago, and yeah. we, we, which does not mean that we become lazy or complacent, which means um, we do the inner work before we try to push against exterior things in the outside world and that really makes a difference what a yeah that's yeah Rumi is uh, just right on with all those things it's uh, mm. well all this spiritual information kind of how to live your life in a in a full way in a joyous way and full of yeah. love it's, this is not new information you know mm-hmm. everybody you, you know this in your heart you don't even need us to, to tell you if you're listening mm-hmm. <laughs> right? mm-hmm. all this information's inside you mm-hmm. so whatever source you tune into that helps you uh, awaken that in yourself that's great. You know, all mm-hmm. that information is already there inside. And when you and when you do notice that that voice of of doubt or uh, you know uh, some unkind thoughts to yourself or whatever mm-hmm. it is, mm-hmm. um, I would say I wouldn't say don't listen to it. What I would say is send it love, love mm-hmm. that part of you, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you have both aspects, and you always will. Like you'll mm-hmm. always have uh, challenges. Um, we'll always have parts of ourselves that. We wish we could change or improve, mm-hmm. but love those parts too, right? Right. Like uh, the example I like to give because people can usually relate to it is if you have a, a dog or a cat, 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, the way that you love them and the way that they love you Mm -hmm. is a great model for yourself and your own body, you Mm -hmm. know, in your own life. So as your as your animal, as your pet gets older, Mm -hmm. you don't think, Oh man, what's wrong with this cat? I mean, look at the look at the way they're walking. I can't believe it. They look so silly, and their hair is getting gray, and right. their eyes aren't working. And you know, oh man, like you don't think that. You just see them mm-hmm. from love, and you're like, oh man, I love my pet. And I can mm-hmm. see they're struggling. I want to give them a little extra love and care. Mm-hmm. And, it's unconditional, and, uh, yeah. Right, and so do that for yourself. Like treat mm-hmm. yourself that. That's and a great discover, way to look at it. Mm-hmm. And what you'll discover, if, if you start loving your body and your life like that, you'll notice that your body and your life loves you mm. all the time, unconditionally, doing its best to make you happy and put you in a good space to enjoy your life. Wow. So, you know, that love comes right back. Yeah. That's a great idea. That's a great idea to do that because we experience a surge of unconditional love for our pets and, you know, uh, even certain objects of clothing in your wardrobe or things like that, inanimate, <laughs> inanimate objects or pets. And um, wow, that, that's a great way to look at it. It's been 45, 46 minutes in this conversation. And um, this in itself is a testimony to how when energy flows, how quickly time passes away, time and space, what you mentioned, I've just realized, you know, 45 minutes if I'm sitting in front of the computer would take a really long time. Uh, but <laughs> this, this just flowed. I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I was meditating on a lot of things that you were saying, Jeffrey, and soaking all that in and i hope uh, for everyone who tuned in you were too uh, please understand that um, transformation takes time so therefore continue with your learning journeys please with materials available online courses books etc and with wonderful human beings spreading love and light like jeffrey allen and his beautiful wife across the world we're so grateful that you did not stick to software engineering i'm sure you would have been a great great engineer uh, but <laughs> you, <laughs> you're adding a lot more uh, to this world through the work that you're doing now. Um, so it's been a pleasure having you here today, Jeffrey. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's been my pleasure too. Yeah. Keep in touch. Thank you. Mm-hmm.